You're now tuned into Mike Check Life to Life. Check, my check, waifu, waifu, tell, is that you? What's up, how you doing bro? I'm doing pretty good, I, I used tell last week, fuck, oh well. This is episode 126 of my check, waifu, waifu, as always, it's brought to you by Lou Complex, make sure you go to lubecomplex.com, check out their new latex release, fucking clean, latex release is clean, and no, it's not actual latex that you wear, it's... <laughs> it's the no. design that they came out with But it looks sick So check it out Go to LukeComplex.com And use that offer code Waifu To save on your entire cart It's also brought to you by DontTalkShop.com um, As well As our Patreon producers Son of a gun Okay Let me pull them up Because I'm Yeah before. While he's while he's pulling them up I'm just gonna make a comment About that latex collection um, I just don't want that latex That, that you latex <laughs> oh, leave it to tell to take that opportunity to drop a little Wayne line. Okay. Uh, shout out to our Patreon producers ABM, Brown, Dre, The Goat G, Jaleesa, K, The Pro, Explicitly, Monique Williams, and Nachi. Speaking of Nachi, oh shit, actually, and Shanti's back. Welcome back, Shanti, for producing this episode and many other previous episodes. Welcome back to the producer tier. Shanti, we appreciate you. Thank you. Welcome back. Um, shout out to Nachi though. He he did give me the go ahead to share that congratulations that we gave him last week because he just had a baby. They just had a baby, so mm-hmm. congratulations to them. And he said he can't wait to watch anime again because he's looking forward to watching eighty six. He also said that um, uh, something that made me mention it to tell and tell. We both watched something called Arcane that we're going to talk about later. So shout out to him for bringing that to my attention because I totally forgot about it. Um, I can't wait to talk about that today. That's probably going to be the main topic of the show today. But other than that, tell what was your uh, what was your episode of the week? If if we can count it, probably something from Arcane. True. Um, uh, this week, I guess realistically, Jobless Reincarnation. If I'm going mm. with strictly anime. Mm. Had probably one of the better episodes. Yeah, man. Uh, World's Finest Assassin had another really good episode, but I still feel like Jobless just hit a little bit better because of like the backstory and stuff. Mm-hmm. That and that's where I was gonna go with Mons. Jobless killed it this week for me, and it's and it's not even have anything to do with our main character. It had everything to do with our side character, which was phenomenal. We're gonna spoil that next at the second half of the show. That show's so good. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's really good for some reason. Like it does pacing so like sporadically, right? Like it's definitely a lot of uh sporadic changes within the story, but it if it, it fits. Does that make sense? I think a lot of the, the pacing is helped with how they do the intro and outro. Yep. How the intro feels like almost like a recap and then like a slight storytelling without words with the music playing into yeah. the actual episode and then it ends on a similar note sometimes it's like the the ending to with be, you know to, but to be honest it's never a recap it's always the progression or the in-betweens like a, right. of what, the travel or you know what i mean is more like it's it's the progression of the story but see, like it yeah. kind of gives you that recap in your mind like okay this is where they were headed last time we saw the episode kind of thing right yeah exactly no that's exactly right jobless is special i man i I want to talk about it so bad. We're going to talk about it in the second half of the show, but God, I just want to talk about it now because it's so fucking good. Uh, it all makes sense, too. I mean, minus the the parts that don't. We'll, we'll talk about it in the second half of the show. Stick around if you watch Jobless Reincarnation for that. Um, okay. I want to give Tom to tell, tell about my... Um, Time here in Cleveland. It's just gonna be short. Okay. I, let's let's talk about it. Um, this is a Polo and Tell podcast. 
I'll, I can't wait to get back to Houston, man. I just forgot how much of a um a loner. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. It's something about it. I just I'm here and I just want to go back. And it's been like so, that for the week and a half week I've been here. So let, let me just say to you, I, I kind of felt like that was going to be you. Um, because I remember moving out of Ohio and like, I was, I really missed it a lot. But after I settled into like my own thing, I was like, whatever, right? Yeah. Like, I, I don't really feel the necessity to go back. We can do vacation. We can do trips. I'll go back for like a week or something like that. Hang out. But realistically, even then, like, I would rather not go and rather have people come out here. Mm. I, I'd rather them come experience this. Like my mom had never been to Texas until she came here. Mm. My mom had never been to Florida until we lived in Florida. She never been to North Carolina until we lived in North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, so it was like, I'd rather be that facilitator for those experiences and like doing other things than going back. Because like, I feel like even though I've lived in Cleveland my entire life, you go back, you see things change. It's like, I, I obviously I haven't lived there my entire life because I did move, but it's like you go back and you see things have changed, but then they haven't changed enough to feel like, oh, this is different. Right. It's so mundane, dude. It's, um, I don't know. I just don't. And then it's just the weather fucking sucks, bro. I'm so, I'm, I hate it. It's depressing. The weather's do you depressing. Have winter tires right now? You have you have all your tires on right now? That's all I have. That's all I know. Okay. I'm from Cleveland, so that's all that's on my car. So, like, <laughs> uh, but I, I just don't. They say it started snowing today. And I'm like, man, this shit sucks. I looked at the temperature down in Houston, 77. You know, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Why did I? <laughs> why did I say I two weeks? I could have went outside in shorts today. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, uh. I am happy to take my dog down there, though. The car wash should be interesting. I just got him a bath and everything, so we're good there. Yeah, it, it sounds exciting. I'm very happy you'll be bringing Saber back with you. Because yeah. uh, Monique and I, we don't we don't talk a lot about it, but we was worried about Saber because I, I know how dogs do when they separate it, you know? Yeah. And I mean, obviously, you know, too, but mm -hmm. just that the thought that I know Saber had been with you all his life, <laughs> yeah. all those years, you know? I'm all he knows. He was probably like slightly traumatized. Like, bro, daddy has been gone for, what is it now? Yeah, a month like, and a half, two months. <laughs> it's been too much. It's too much for him. Yeah, it was. That's why he got anxiety. <laughs> like he has to take anxiety medication now. So that's, um, that's different. Cause he was, he was to help my anxiety. He's, he's my, actual support animal so it's, it's weird yeah that now he has it because of that situation but all change so it's gonna be better so it's gonna be we're gonna be good i just um i miss my space yeah so, so and good. that that's another beauty of it that that space is important very very uh all right let's get into the show um we already talked about the show of the week I do want to give like thanks again. I know I'm sounding like a fucking broken record and it's probably annoying y'all, but I have to thank y'all so much for listening to the podcast. I don't know what it is, what's been happening, what went viral, but we've literally day after day after day, the, the listens are climbing and we, we seriously just can't thank you enough for that. It's going crazy. Unbelievably, unbelievably crazy. And it's, and it's so good because we, we pride ourselves on trying to grow as natural as possible with everything. Not, not just you know from you guys on the podcast, but social media as, as well. Like the follows have been going crazy on Twitter too. So make sure you follow our Twitter at Mike Check Waifu. But it's been going nuts. Um, I want to say that we're gonna try to put together an episode for a guest that we're gonna have. Um, who's actually from Cleveland? He's a big anime fan. Uh, we're gonna put together a show for them when they come on. It's gonna be special because. He's fucking good. I'm not gonna hold you. For sure. I don't like a lot, and and that's just not me talking shit. I don't. I don't like. I don't even like rap anymore. Uh, my rap taste is very selective now. But when I say this man, he can spit. He can actually spit, and it's mostly anime based, all, if not all anime based. So it's gonna be good to have him on the show. We're gonna feature feature his song, of course, during break too. It's gonna be it's gonna be dope. I can't wait to introduce y'all guys to him. You probably already know him because. A lot of our mutuals actually follow him, so it's interesting to see that. Um, right. 
can't wait to have this conversation. If y'all know what we talk about, tweet at us at Mike Check Waifu. Take a guess. <laughs> Take a guess. Be dope if y'all figure it out. Um, on with the show, tell. Let's talk about Arcane, man. Or oh, before we talk about Arcane, should we talk about the one show we watched that it's not coming back until January? Yeah, let's talk about that first. Let's do it. So uh, we both watched the World's End Harem. Yes, the first uh, episode. The first episode. Well, I just recently watched it. I don't know when Polo watched it, but I just recently watched it. Literally just turned it on. Yeah, I watched it a while back, but then I rewatched it again when I saw you watched it on Annie List. Yeah, you know, I had to update that. I updated it literally just for Polo to see it. <laughs> 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 but like, all right, I don't want to, I don't want to give off my thoughts right away. But I want to know, what, what are your thoughts? What do you think? So the first episode, I mean, I already knew, like I said, I already knew a little bit about this because I read very, very minimum about it because it's obviously piqued my interest because of its subject matter. Okay. It's nature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Good yeah. nature in anime. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so um, I, I, wa- I watched the first episode. I'm like, oh, this is going to be phenomenal because it, it was very similar to what I read in that first episode. I think two chapters I read. I can't remember. It was so long ago, but it was very, very accurate to it, but just better, just better all around. So I'm like, I can't now. I can't wait. I don't even want to read it because I, I want to watch it now because it was so much better in the in the actual anime because of the mm-hmm. flow. The flow felt it felt smoother than I turning don't say the same thing. It was just smooth. Yeah, than turning the page. You know, turning the page. It was a little bit more, I guess, context unnecessary context that you really didn't need. Which kind of like, I don't know, it turned me off a little bit from it. Yeah, and that's the beauty of anime in general. Absolutely. Obviously, you, you want context, but sometimes too much context is overwhelming. Exactly. You don't want all of that. So, you don't World and Harold definitely did that well because I did read the first chapter, first couple chapters, the ones that covered this first episode. Yeah, yeah. And because uh, I think it was like the first two or three chapters, like two and a half chapters. Yeah, it was I something stopped, like that, I right? Once it was different. Uh, but, what what it did was it did take a lot of that contextual stuff and kind of cut cut it out and mm-hmm. just made it available in the visual essence of yes. the anime. Yes. So it, I think World's in Harem did a really good job at the adaptation for that first episode. Um, I'm excited for when it does come in January. I'm 100% going to watch it. Um, I'm really tempted to read it, but Polo said, you know, it's coming back in January. Why not yeah. wait? Yeah, why not? Um, we got a lot to it, do. It seems really good. Um, our main character, I don't think he's realistic. <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> because I'm gonna be real with you. I don't I don't see a I don't see a man in that position unless he was I don't see a man in that position necessarily folding to that unless he was already married and he Correct. already has his wife like right there. Correct. And you know, he's kinda like, I'm cool with just this. Y'all do what y'all gotta do for that. Correct. So and, so for and, some- and I think I, was, I think even in that scenario, go ahead, go ahead. Time out real quick. Let's just, let's give it some context. We're gonna go to, we're gonna spoil the first episode. The first episode is on the site that shall not be named. Make sure if y'all are a part of the My Check Waifu Waifu community, check out our Discord. We just added a bot called Anime, <laughs> and she actually you you can type dash and then Anime and then the Anime name, and it gives you information for the show. So if you have any show recommendations that you want to give the community, pop it over in the Discord. It's fucking dope. That bot is incredible. Um, but we, <laughs> the context is this, this, it's this disease. No, for, let me start off from the very beginning. It's our main character. Our protagonist has multiple sclerosis, which is interesting because it's, it obviously it, it touched on a personal level because as my mom also has multiple sclerosis. My uncle as well. Yeah. And to tell uncle. So the, the context is in the, it's in the future about 2040 he has multiple sclerosis and the way they actually have a cure for it, but the way they have to do it is you have to go into cryo sleep for five years so they can embed the cells to actually correct and fix the dead cells that are yeah. in your body. Um, the AI replaces all of your cells, basically. Right, right. And for those who don't have multiple sclerosis, it literally just kills cells that fun- that helps you function in everyday life, essentially. Like my mom, right now she's lucky. She has no major issues except for her peripheral vision and her right eye is just gone. She just can't see peripherally out of her right eye. So, um, but and my uncle is refined to a wheelchair. Can't get in and out of bed by himself. Uh, you you know? know, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough disease. So the fact that this future has something for it was, was pretty intriguing to me, obviously to us, uh, cause it hits so personal, but 
it gets a little silly. So he goes into his cryo sleep. He has his uh, his family around his his immediate family and this girl, obviously, who seems to be a childhood crush, um, who he uh, attempted to confess to, and it didn't go quite as planned. Um, because he was just telling her that he was about to go into this cryo sleep for five years. Uh, but he ended up going into the cryo sleep. And when he wakes up from the cryo sleep, there is um, a disease that ravaged the entire earth called MK. Now, hear me out. Yes, sir. <laughs> the fact that the disease is called MK, I literally thought of Mortal Kombat. And Same. I was like, it's Same. the Mortal Kombat virus. <laughs> <laughs> so it's essentially a virus that that ravaged that it affects everyone. Literally everyone is infected with it, but the men die from it. Something about their chromosomes kills them and they literally die within a, a like I said, I think they said a month or so. Um and it just kills them. So, in this world, the, the there were five men that were put into cryo sleep because of multiple sclerosis or other reasons where they slept through the initial outbreak of the virus. And then while they're in while they were in cryo sleep, they <laughs> They obtain the antibodies to basically not ever have to worry about the MK disease. So every man in the world is dead. There are five men left in the world. Only women. Five billion women. Five dead men. or in cryo sleep. Dead or in cryo sleep. Correct. <laughs> and again, there's only five men in cryo sleep. So in the entire wor- world, there's only five men. So with that being said, he comes out of cryo sleep and he's tasked with repopulating the earth. How do we we repopulate? We already know for the kids that are listening that are not old enough to know. Uh, I don't know. Artificial insemination cannot work. Nope. <laughs> they, I was just thinking that too. I was thinking that when I was reading it back then. I'm like, but there's ways. And then they mentioned it. I'm like, oh shit. So hey, can't do it. Can't do it. It has to be the full um intercourse, if you will. And our main character is he's not for it because he wanted to wait until his childhood crush or childhood, you know, lover or whatever. He wanted to find her, but apparently she disappeared. So that looks like that's going to be the task of the show. But he's going to get uh, uh he's going to get it thrown at him pretty much every which every single day, <laughs> every single day. So but uh, as 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 dry as I guess I can say dry as I made that sound, it is so much more interesting because of the dynamics within the characters and the character. And the psychology of it, like yes. th- just the idea of him like coming out of cryo sleep and then just being in a vehicle driving through town. And he's like, why is the vehicle completely blacked out? You know, the idea he's like, I don't know. And I didn't even expect it to be this way, but he busts out the car and, you know, he goes into the town and he sees like it's only women here. What's going on? Right. And this is kind of where he gets the explanation, more of the explanation of the virus. And um women just start reaching and grabbing for him because they haven't seen a man yep. in in five years, four years. So, uh, like you said, though, think about the psychology of it now, listeners, okay? <laughs> the psychology is that these women aren't reaching for him because they want some, want some, okay? They're reaching out for him because they know that this can literally change their life. They will become the most prized possession human on earth because now they're, they uh, inseminate it with, <laughs> with a man and now they have the child that will push the future world further because they're, unless they have a girl, which then, whoops, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> but they, they're, they're like the most prized possession when, when you, like you will become, basically you'll become rich because with the men gone, like the earth basically, everything was, was went to poverty. Like it just went to shit. So, yeah. Not saying that women can't do it, you know, do the jobs that men can because they obviously did in half, but they're just, it's, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. The reality is that the world functions with it needs the duality, duality of man and woman. Yes. Um, while I do prize, praise our women as prizes and I love them, but realistically you can't have one without the other. Exactly. Uh, and this is showing like, even with artificial insemination, uh, that probably isn't going to always be the proper outcome for humanity. So um, the we, way we're going to get some tweets about this. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, try, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to push no agenda. No, that, no agenda. You know? But uh, I do think that like this is an interesting scenario because there's no way if there's five billion women and five men that they can really repopulate with five. With, like they don't have enough time in a day. Right. 
So the only thing they can do realistically is or try stamina. and make, Yeah, <laughs> right. So if they if they do one or two a day, right? At most they hitting maybe a thousand if they do like one, two, three a, a day. You know? Yeah. But then <laughs> that's I, a lot. That's but, a lot, bro. And then you gotta wait the until they're grown enough so they can do the, do the same thing. It's gonna be so fucking weird because the, those five men have to basically whoever they you know in, you know inseminate with, they have to do that with within the kind finds of a what can you call it? Uh, what's those um a, a wildlife preserve essentially that so then they can yeah. keep it separate so then they don't inbreed. It's a it's a weird situation, a very weird situation. They gotta, yeah, they gotta breed with the other, and and that's that's also another crazy thing. Yeah, because realistically, with with five billion people, sometimes you can't choose to be like picky. Oh yeah, but yeah. I mean, you, you can't be picky, but you can be very picky with five billion people, right? Like very. you can say we're going with this group of people, mm-hmm. but realistically, they can they can't even do a whole country's population's worth. <laughs> exactly. This this is gonna take generations upon generations upon generations before they even like back to a regular like uh, population level for the earth, and then the, even then women are gonna outnumber men. If this were like a real case scenario, women would outnumber men for hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah, I'm gonna say that yeah. of years. Yeah. It's, it's never gonna catch back up, and as soon as it does catch up. Like, if you know the numbers, and I'm not trying to get too into numbers with, like, men, men die more often than women, whether it be from just, like, depression, uh, suicide, violence, all those things. Men die more frequently than women, and men are born more frequently than women. So, the, they got to really look at the idea, and I, I'm, not, I'm not, I don't know what the idea of this is going to really be, but the, the fact that that's a thing in this, is like, there's a lot of different avenues they can take with even like the psychological aspect yeah. of this like they have they want men to be born but how do they keep those men now into this whole equation let me i'm not gonna hold you this is a mic check waifu waifu ass analysis okay and this is just how we <laughs> we going too far how we do this this show is absolutely not going to go this far i can guarantee you this this is a mindless etchy anime with is a, it mindless it could not it seems serious right it seems all serious so maybe not mindless maybe not mindless but it's definitely an edgy that that is uh treading some some weird lines that i don't think we necessarily need to dive into because it's not going to go this deep it's yeah, just not. Yeah. if it does it'll be great because this would be something that then we can actually recommend not just for its you know edginess but for literal the literal constructs of the fucking anime like right we're intrigued for sure january um, is really really close so and there's nudity oh yeah yeah of course of course <laughs> i wasn't expecting that bro in that, in that in that scene i was like i looked over like is my wife watching <laughs> <laughs> this ain't our normal hentai uh, hours no <laughs> yo that is funny man that's good but all in all, good episode. Very pretty. I like the art design of it. Um, I don't know why they. I don't know why they delayed. They probably delayed it for some old. Um, let's censor this. Let's censor that kind of shit. To be honest, so, or they yeah, or they probably wanted to um make a censored and uncensored version. So like people who wanted to see the full scope of it could. Yeah, yeah, true, <laughs> true. All right, <laughs> that's um. Let's move on. Let's talk about the main topic today. That's Arcane. Arcane, uh, of course, is the Netflix animated series based off of the video game League of Legends. Um, I am not. I am not an avid League of Legends fan, so this is going to come from a perspective from somebody that didn't play League of Legends as, as much. I p- maybe got about twenty hours in. Um, that's and again compared to what League of Legends is, that's, that's nothing. Uh, Tell played a lot more, but TFT though, right? Yeah, I've, I've played League of Legends, but right now I mostly play TFT yeah. as, a, as a pastime almost daily. Yeah, so uh, with that being said, we are not League of Legends veterans, but I'm going to start off with this. You don't need to know what League of Legends is to watch and enjoy this. 
Mm-hmm. And I am going to also say, and I know Tell wants to say this, but I'm going to say it first because I'm going to, I'm just, I really want to, really, really want to say it. Most beautiful fucking show you will ever, that will ever come out of Netflix. Most fucking just gorgeous, gorgeous piece of art for all this. The, the, and that's, it is, it's really beautiful. I was very surprised knowing Blew this on away. Netflix. But this is not on the Netflix budget. No, it's on the Riot budget, which they make billions yeah. and billions of dollars. And, and this is, and I don't want to go too much into this, but I'm going to say this because I did have this in my mind when I was watching this. This is what we expect from a game anime yes. show or a game TV series. Um, Unless with it's a budget Vendor. like this. Yeah. Oh, but Castlevania okay. is no good. But uh, 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 like Pokemon has all the budget in the world. All of it. And yet, their their stuff never looks as good. Never has as good a sound design. Never has as good. But I mean, let's think about it like this, though. To be fair, this is this is literally League of Legends art style. <laughs> like yeah. this is the game's art style. So the, makes sense. The only only barrier I'm giving to to Pokemon is because it's a kids show. Mm. So they want to make it appealing to kids. But realistically, they could make something that looks this good, and only Pokemon's movies look this good. And not not quite this good either. Yeah, no, not even. I was just about to say that again. It's because Pokemon isn't the game doesn't look like this or it looked like that. You know what I'm saying? The game doesn't. Well, it didn't back in the day because obviously it came out when you know the sprites and shit was was in. Right. So it's a little bit different to do this, but again, with this being League of Legends based off the game, it's obviously going to use the League of Legends art style. Yeah, Which, it, it looks beautiful. But I didn't think they were going to utilize it this fucking well, man. I, I seriously didn't. They got, they literally have animated cartoon effects mixed with the League of Legends art style. Kind of like, um, what was a great example? The Spider-Verse movie. How they mm-hmm. mix, mix the different, the different art styles between the comics and, and, and just movie in general. It's fucking incredible. Arcane is one of the most beautiful shows I've ever seen in my entire life. But, um, and their animation style is what really brought me in. And this is, it brought me to a topic I want to talk to Polo about. Yeah. Um, so it's a 2D mixed with 3D animation. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's cell shaded, um, which gives it a really cool look. But when I looked this up, I looked it up because it was really giving me this kind of Uncanny Valley feel, which um, I, I talked to Polo about earlier. But Uncanny Valley is. Mm-hmm. Um, a term used to describe the relationship between the human-like appearance of a robotic object and the emotional response it evokes, right? So, why this gives me the uncanny valley feel? And I'm not the only person who feels this way, because I, when I looked it up, it was popping up everywhere. And a lot of people think were, was thinking that the, the animation company used motion capture. Like, they were looking at an actual person's face, yes, and, yes. and you d- did that, right? And they didn't. It's just their own 2D, 3D animation. But what really made me think that wasn't, like, the actual... Well, it was the motions, because the motions seemed extremely human-like. Yeah, yeah. Like, when the, when the eyes blink, um, there was one time when the girl kind of did a head movement and turned, and I was just like, that just seems a little too human. It, it made me feel a little uncomfortable, but it made me feel, like, more invested, because these characters were showing extremely human-like like patterns Mm -hmm. Um, and that was just another beautiful thing about it because it made me relate to the characters even more because it it was just it it felt real while it was clearly not real yeah um the story is so so good there are some pieces of it that are a little um dramatized if you will right like some parts but it 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 obviously makes sense in in what the context is I, I think I think this might be the best video game to series situation we've ever had. 100%. Like ever. Because again, you don't have to know anything about League of Legends to understand what the fuck is going on. But it is funny to hear the references, the, the very slight references I do know. Obviously, I, I know the main characters of V or Vi. I always thought it was V, but it's apparently Vi. Um, and Jinx, and you know Jinx. Jinx. Obviously, we know Jinx. Every the world knows Jinx. And Echo is a newer character. Uh, I Joy, uh, Jace. What's his name? Jace. Yeah, Jace, people know Jace. J- know Jace because I think I played him top lane. If I remember correctly all the time when I did try to play League. Um, but yeah, there there's some um, there's some recognizable characters. I I feel like <laughs> the the problem is with this that kind of bugged me a little bit. 
is you can tell the references they try to put in were so obviously references that if it, it broke up the the uncanny valleyness of the the show. Um, right. Like when when Vi- was a Victor when Victor was doing his his the robotic arm thing when he was given that that uh, that description of the, the the robotic arm they literally mm-hmm. framed it up just how his character is in the game because he has he literally has that arm attached to the back of his back and he uses it to do attacks and shit it was very 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 weird because I'm like oh, okay now I know you're just trying to do this because it's the reference to the video game which is cool I get it for the fans but it it took me out of the immersion that I was brought to with how the show was telling the story. Wonderful, right. wonderful, wonderful show. It's a Netflix series right now. It's only six episodes. They're releasing what? Three weekly. It feels like two weekly. Yeah, it's three. Th- it, I think three episodes weekly. And I think the next week is going to be the final three episodes. Interesting. Interesting. So a set of nine, I think, okay. I, I think for anime lovers, this is a must watch. Um, just as a as a because you know we like sound design. What do you think about the sound design overall? Amazing, amazing. It it made me want to fucking play. It did its job. It made me want to play the game, even though I I don't want to play league. Like, I'm just not a it league made you, player. It made you want to put yourself in that to in that of, world. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. I love. I absolutely love the the um. I guess the uh, I'm gonna say lack of a better term the dad of the series um the situation Andrew. yep the situation where that uh it evoked it okay here it is here it is it evoked so much emotion out of me i was sitting here vocally verbally expressing my anguish with the situation that um at the uh, powder uh, gotta say, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to go into it at all. I don't want to go into it at all. I want people to watch it and experience it because that shit was, it, it, the anger. Like, why? No, fucking no. And that. That's all. I'm. That's about as far as I'm gonna go. But I was literally verbally screaming at my my computer screen, like, fuck, yeah. man, why, 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 why? It it invoked it, that emotion from me for for sure. Yeah, especially with how uh, I guess like interesting the first few episodes where they kind of just made you feel a really good sense of like mm-hmm. like even though they're they're squabbling within each other there's a family connection yeah 100 percent. so i can understand the both party the, the parties and the situation that they're in but it's just so crazy to see how it was about to turn out and how it ended up turning out and that's all i'm gonna say to that uh because i again i don't really want to spoil this this is so fucking good dude incredible it turned out to be incredible and I completely understand what you mean when you said the uncanny uncanny valleyness of it because it's it's definitely there because it's um, some of the fight scenes were fucking crazy. They're, Very much so. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the, the funny thing is, yeah, the funny thing is, is League of Legends in every fucking trailer that they have ever had. I've of course seen them because I'm I'm just deep in a video game sphere. Every trailer that they have, they use slow motion, and to see it brought into the show was hilarious to me. I just I laughed out loud every time they did it. But they all they did it well. They did it very very well, mm-hmm. which was very fun to watch. Because <laughs> I'm like, yo, it's so it's so crazy when you put like two and two. I wish it was for a game I actually liked. Not that I don't like yeah. League. I think League is fine, but I just don't play it. So I got into it too late. That's that was my thing. If yeah. I hadn't gotten into it so late, I think I would have enjoyed it more. But it was already making a ton of money and drawing in so many people. And when I got in, I just wasn't good enough at that time. So I just let it go. True. No, you were too busy playing Heroes of the Storm. Um, <laughs> I played League way before I played Heroes of the Storm. I know. Because <laughs> Heroes wasn't out yet uh, when we were trying League. Dude, we tried League a long time ago, too. That's the crazy thing. Dexter was playing when I still lived in Cleveland. Yeah, I know. And he was the one who told me to play it. And I was yeah. like, I ain't. Same. Yeah, he was, he was trying to get us to play for a while. I do want to um, I do want to get into my my platinum man thoughts. All right, let's do it. This is fucking this most recent episode of Platinum Man. What was it? Episode seven or whatever the fuck eight. I I I'm starting to not like it at all. Like I'm just starting to not. It's pissing me off. Okay, so and I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna go into slight spoilers. Whatever. If you haven't watched Platinum Man, whatever. I don't. We're not going to talk about it in the second half of the show. I'm gonna bring it here now. I got gripes with it. I don't think it's really as good as we thought. Now, 
because the start of it was so strong, so powerful. It gave our main character, you know, depth. Now he went from depth to having depth to having zero whatsoever to being this most, the fucking just weirdest, angstiest weirdo I've ever seen. And it ain't nothing wrong with being angsty and, you know, for the good. But the, the dynamic switch was weird to me. Um, and I know what they're doing. They're setting it up for that evident character change, right? The obvious uh, Ken Kaneki moment or the, what was it? What's the other fucking guy that had a, just a mental breakdown switch? Uh, besides Kaneki, who else? Uh, uh, what's his name from Death Note, obviously? Oh, L. Yeah, from Light. Def, uh, Light. Light from Death Note. Uh, well, why would I draw drawing a blank there? It's obviously setting up for that, and it's so fucking predictable and just disgusting. It's pissing me off because I like I was talking to some some of our friends on Twitter. Shout out to the old Taku podcast, I believe it's called. Um, shout out to Rob, uh, aka Father of Ash, Dad needs to talk podcast. We were just talking about it, and it's just like it, it it's losing its its grip because of obviously the Power Rangers suit situation. That shit is pissing me off. I can't stand these Power Rangers suits that magically appearing, especially with our new, with our guy that, you know, that has the cancer and he, he just so happens to be a designer of fucking <laughs> of these fucking places. And he has a Power Ranger suit that he brought from home. That's fucking, he, he got the doom guy suit and the Power Rangers suit. So dumb. It's all so, so stupid. And it's turning into something that I don't want it to. Um, it's becoming extremely frustrating. Now I know there's a lot of people that still like it. The intrigue is what I'm, I've been hearing from people. The intrigue is there. Okay. It was there starting to fall off a fucking cliff for me personally. I'm starting to feel like this intrigue is turning into, I don't fucking know. I feel like they're just throwing us around in a circle just so they can have that character change like light did or like Kaneki did. You know that uh, disappointment I told you about? Yeah. It's every week. It's like they go to the end of the hill, just drop you off the hill with yeah. disappointment every time. Yep. Gone. We're gone. And it's it's blowing me. And I, I know a lot of people aren't going to see it. I asked a lot of people on Twitter that after they watch, because a lot of people say, oh, I was waiting to binge it. I was waiting to binge it. I told them, like, just watch up to the point now and just tell us. Tweet at us, at Mike Check Waifu, at King Teliano, at Polo Born Fly. Tell us, are we tripping? Because this shit is fucking just blowing my mind the amount of disappointment is given now i said it's uh, like i i am i'm not and i'm not an idiot i am well versed enough to know that we do watch a lot of anime like me and tell specifically we're in a different situation we have uh, an anime podcast where we do a little bit like deeper discussions on on the episode to episode to just the overarching story and, and shit that is important to us. We know what's important to us. And when we get a situation like this, we know that we can't reliably say that this is just not our biases coming out, you know, because we have this podcast. We know what we look for. We know what we watched. Not many people watch as much shit as we do. But I need to know if people feel the same way we do, which, to be fair, at my tweet, majority of them do. Yeah. And I, I don't think it's biased, bro. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we were being biased at all. I think that we we gave it a fair shot, multiple fair shots, if anything. Facts. Um, it just, as other people say, it keeps dropping the ball every every single time. We uh, we give it a chance every week, and it's supposed to deliver on this this promise of intrigue. And we are intrigued with what might happen next, but then they give us these bullshit cliffhangers that don't really pay off and that's what it consistently is yep um these characters are not very interesting anymore nope um the powers aren't even interesting anymore nope the most interesting thing is hopefully I, i'm not trying to be mean about it the most interesting thing is hopefully that at some point our main character becomes a good main character because at this point he is more bland than he was in the first episode when he wanted to die yeah yeah <laughs> and that's and that's the point that i'm making like the fact that again, it's so fucking obvious. It's so obvious to 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 watchers of just different anime to know that what they're setting up for. They're setting up for him to be like, "Oh, I'm not, 
I'm not going to kill anyone. I don't want to kill anyone. My mommy told me not to kill anyone for him to eventually turn into that character that fucking murders people. It's supposed to be this very unique character, which isn't unique anymore, obviously, because we just named a couple of anime that does it. It's not going to be unique. So the, for them to set it up so obvious to then try to give it to us, it won't be as, as um, I guess, shocking because we all know it's going to happen. Yeah. They they completely missed missed the liver every single week. Um and the the I don't even know what could make this better. Um Yeah, I don't I don't know. Cause at this point I feel like I've been let down so much that if it did get better, I'll still watch it, but it's not gonna be it's already disappointed me for a third of the anime. Yeah, it's it's all about how that how that character breakthrough is gonna happen, right? Like we know it's coming. Is it gonna be as disappointing as we think it is? Probably. Is it is this gonna matter though? Like, like the first eight episodes of Steins Gate, they make sense after the ninth episode. Mm-hmm. Is it gonna be the same thing here? Is it gonna make sense when we get to that? And I feel like they've made it to this point where it's not gonna make sense. It, no. It's not gonna matter. No, it's just going to be an obvious quote unquote twist. I I think <laughs> uh, I'm just probably going I'm cr- probably going to catch some shit for saying this, but I think this is for just mainstream audiences. And I say that loosely, right? Like mainstream, what the fuck is that, right? But I I do think this is so for it to become as popular as Death Note did. And I I see that, but I think if this is for mainstream, a lot of people are going to stop watching it anyway. I don't like think this so. is gonna. Be, I think this is something that a lot of main people will pick up and be like, "Oh, this is this was cool. This this gave me hype in the beginning." But when they get to like the eighth or ninth episode, they're gonna be like, "Okay, I'm done." I don't know about that. I don't know there's, about. You don't think there's enough really good mainstream stuff out there that they could watch instead? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Because uh, I mean, right now what we got, Demon Slayer. Um. But we, we're talking about mainstream. Mainstream. Yeah, yeah that's exactly what I'm... <clears throat> on Hulu, there's still a ton of stuff people could watch. That, that, that's exactly what I'm talking on, about. On Netflix, there's a ton of stuff they could watch. You could watch Arcane instead of this. You, you, so, but what I'm, what I'm getting at is they have Demon Slayer. They don't have Dr. Stone anymore, but they do have Attack on Titan. Like it, it, they, just, they have those three or four shows that everybody is going to watch, everybody's going to talk about. This is trying to become one of them. And to become one of them, it has to have the intrigue. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know if that character breakthrough moment is going to be enough even for them. But I think they're just. Don't, you don't think so either. No, I don't think so at all. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I just think that's what that's what it's going for. That's why it's doing the obvious. Him oh, breaking down. Oh my god! I'm not going to kill anyone. That's why they're doing that obvious fucking over over dramatized bullshit. So they can when he has his breakthrough moment, it's going to be something. Some, something major that's gonna quote unquote break the internet. Oh look, he didn't want to kill nobody, but now look at him. He's killing everybody. It's crazy. Bah. You know. This this makes me feel like I understand why Shonen Jump has been canceling manga series. Mm. Interesting. Talk to me. Because they, they cancel manga series, even if they're popular. If they're not getting enough watches or enough views then they or, or reads, they just cancel them. Mm. And this is something that would have been like super intriguing in the beginning. Only would have been finished because of who the writer is. But if this was somebody, some, some unknown writer, this would have been canceled nine episodes, nine chapters in. Wow. I, I, don't, I don't see this having actual staying power without the name behind the writer. Interesting stuff. <clears throat> That's interesting because uh, I never even, never even thought of Because the manga's done, right? It's finished. So. Right. But I'm saying like Phantom Seer was really good to me. Mm as a manga but it got canceled early because it didn't get enough like reads but it was very popular it was on it was on the shonen jump front page and every chapter that came out everyone was watching was reading it, it got some pretty decent hype behind it but it still didn't garner the, the like reads that they were expecting or wanted this is something that i feel like you would have easily become bored with and would have forgot the chapter came out and then would have been like oh shoot i forgot to watch it and then in a month they'd be like oh yeah Titan Man was canceled early. Why was it canceled early? Because no one was watching it or caring about it enough. Yeah. Uh, like the homie Safir said that uh, it did, it does have 
18 more episodes to go. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I do want to mention one thing before we go into get to know my check wife wife. There is something that I watched that I didn't talk about. And speaking of Safir, I, I should have watched it because he brought it to, he brought it to my attention. I didn't watch it uh, until <laughs> literally I watched it all in one day. It was so fucking good. It's a slice of life called um, Sing for Me Yesterday. Sing Yesterday for Me. Sing Yesterday. I'm going to look this up. I want to give it the proper the proper just do because it's fucking so good. So, so good. I literally watched the entire thing in one day. Sing Yesterday for Me. He told me about this a long time ago. I looked at it. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, it's a slice of life. Okay, dope. But it has Sing Yesterday for Me. Is it is it music? People know Polo don't do the music anime at all. I don't. I I won't and don't. Um, unless it's Vivi apparently. Um, but this one is a slice of life that has the mess. Shout out to all my messy slice of life watchers. It has some mess in it. Um, it's a very weird situation because uh, I don't want to say it. There, it has you rooting for certain people until until like the very pretty much the very end I'm gonna just say that um after the very end I'm like oh I get it I see why I'm having the same revelation as the main character and that's fucking awesome and the fact that the show could do that is phenomenal seeing yesterday for me is a really great slice of life it almost made my top five slice of life anime that's how good it is what <laughs> it almost did bro until the end the end uh, left me left a lot to be desired, but it's real good. Very pretty show again. Super great main character again. Uh, yeah, crazy. I don't. There's a part of it I didn't quite understand too that that kind of like drops it on the on the list for me. But it's still worth the watch. So if you haven't seen seen for me seen yesterday for me, watch it. It's real good. Um, Polo's top five of slice of life is pretty sacred. So it's very to be very there. sacred. It's wild very sacred so if you like mess there is some mess here so watch it i would suggest let's get to know my check white foo foo it's my turn to roll around the number generator tell turn to read the question uh i think yeah we literally just found this out and i almost screwed it up oh the number is 59 questions oh shit 59. 34 What's the last movie you watched? Last movie? That's a good question. I, uh, the Demon Slayer movie, actually. I haven't even watched Which, anything like on, on Netflix. Nothing? Mm. Huh. I don't watch much TV or anything. Same, bro. I, if it's not anime, I normally don't watch it. Facts. So, I, yeah, I think the last movie I watched was the Demon Slayer movie. That's wild it's, to me. I had to watch something with Monique. Let me see. Wait, is that true? The harder, the harder they fall. No, that's not true. Uh, no, that is true. That's it. No, that's fucking crazy. Uh, there's an anime movie that I think I added to my watch list on any list. So I've, I've been also doing what I um was doing before the last season started, before the Vivian 86 season, whichever season that was. I'm going back to any list and I'm browsing anime and I'm going back to previous years. I'm browsing, browsing the different seasons and different years to see what I think is interesting that I just missed. So I'm going to be coming with more, more of those anime. I was like, I did exactly that for a scene for me. Yes. And I'm like, Oh shit. I don't remember Sophia talking about this. Right. And, I, and I did that. I've been doing that a lot. So if I come next week with another random anime it's because that's exactly what I'm doing. Make sure y'all follow us on Angelus, Angelus.co slash Polo Born Fly, Angelus.co slash King Teliano. I think you have to put user in it, but I think it automatically corrects. But uh, yeah. So, what about you, Tell? What would you say? Hard, the harder they fall, or something? Yeah, the harder they fall. Uh, it's a Netflix like black western movie with like. Well, oh, it just it just it. Yep, I did see that. I did. It's see that. pretty good. It was much better than I expected. Dope. Okay, that's interesting. All right. Again, <clears throat> when we come back, we're going to spoil not much because it wasn't that much too spoiled because 86 didn't have an episode but we do have blue period we do have jobless reincarnation and that's probably it we just talked about platinum in so we're going to spoil those two shows when we come back after these smooth tones brought to you by DJ Polo. <laughs>
the polo for the Mike Chase Waifu Waifu podcast. All right. Are we taking a break? Yes, sir. Welcome back to episode 126 of White Check Waifu Waifu. Uh, make sure you go to iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast and rate the podcast for us. We greatly appreciate that. Um, it means a lot and it helps out a lot. So rate the podcast. Thank you all so much for listening. So we are going to spoil. What are we going to spoil first? Jobless? Uh... Yeah, I think Job Destroyer Foundation had the better. True. Well, man, debatable, I guess. But, <laughs> yeah, Jobless was fucking insane, dude. Uh, To see Roxy go back home, finally, after we figure out that she hasn't been home for a while after she ditched, and then this episode learning why she ditched. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Because I, I would have compl- did the same thing. I would just like to say, I thought those were her siblings. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> her mom and dad, like, they, like they 22 years old. Yeah, they, that's because that's, that's part of their, their, um, what you call it? Race, I guess. Their, yeah, I, but I thought Roxy was like 100 years old. Right. So I don't you, know why I would have thought. Tilt your mic. So it sounds different. How about now? There it is. Okay, better. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very interesting story. Because okay, this episode. Well, yeah, let's go from the beginning. Yeah, this episode was just about Roxy, pretty much, and her her okay. travels uh, up to this point, and why she basically left home. Okay, she left home essentially because her people they communicate telepathically. They don't talk. They literally just communicate telepathically, which is such a fucking interesting concept. Because imagine you being born in, into a civilization where nobody opens their mouth, but you, you can't communicate telepathically because of, I don't know, they didn't really go into details on exactly why she can't, but she can't. So she's raised in this village where everybody talks telepathically and and literally you are the only one that can, that, that only speaks verbally because nobody else needs to because they speak telepathically. So, and and the way they kind of demonstrate that she can't tell what they're saying was really cool because it just sounds like static and pops like almost like fireworks in her head. Yes, because she knows they're trying to say something. She can't hear it because that's just not how she was quote unquote wired for like the word. It almost makes me think that like it was a trade off 
maybe she became such a good magician because she couldn't get the telepathy mm. or, maybe, or maybe there's something hindering her in general right like maybe she could clear it up if she were to let something mentally go you know there, it, but i do think that maybe she can't do the telepathy because she's so good at everything else she's such a good magician she's she's the most well renowned magician in her in her village right you just okay. yeah you just you just kicked it you just kicked it because that's probably exactly right wow yeah i didn't even think about that because this world does seem like it will be that kind of world where it essentially <laughs> call it the equivalent to exchange the hell out of people um, right like when when Rudy has got his eye like his eye is it only functions when you can understand it's um I guess components or alchemy behind it or whatever that could right. be entirely the case she became this incredible magician who literally is renowned across the entire world but a king level magician is rare yeah but she can't talk to her people crazy man because uh, imagine you just showing up you just walk up to your village and you hear fucking nothing <laughs> nothing dude because everybody's talking right up here that blows my and mind the, and then they also look at you funny because you can't understand them I don't even know if they I don't see this is the thing I don't I think they're worried exactly now, I, don't, I don't know if it, I don't, that's not what I meant though like just the fact that they're worried about it like they're trying to see like why she can't yeah. hear them why they're not getting through like <clears throat> That's like being deaf and speaking sign language and trying to give someone that language and you don't understand something important they're trying to tell you. They're just trying to say thank you. And I'm pretty sure she gets the gist of what they're trying to say because of what she just did or what just happened, but she can't actually hear it, which emotionally, that's got to suck, bro. Scarring. Because again, nobody, I guarantee you, nobody in that village saying anything wrong bad talking behind her back like when her mother and father was talking to each other when she was in the house it freaked her out she's like all right i'm about to go because i don't know what the fuck y'all saying like that gave her anxiety because i don't know what are you what y'all talking about they're literally just like they're happy to see their daughter because they communicate After how many years yeah it's because the way they communicate is through tele to telepathic they're just telling each other how much they are happy to see her probably just having that normal conversation but because she can't hear it just like now you're talking about me like what are you saying you know i can't understand you so why would you do this in front of me and that again mentally i feel her wholeheartedly wholeheartedly and, and i i don't think it's just the fact that like people know that she can't hear because those kids didn't know that she couldn't telepathically hear her and the woman adults. walking up the hill didn't know they mm -hmm. just they, cause they probably didn't recognize her or anything like that right but the idea that 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 communication is barred from her for that's supposed to be natural. Imagine, <clears throat> imagine being a black person that can't dance, right? <laughs> and I, I'm not, that's I'm, a weird I'm, one. I'm, I'm being funny, but let's be real though. Like how many, like you, you've met black people who can't dance, yeah. but it's like, if they do feel awkward in situations where like everybody's dancing. You don't want to just don't mm. like I've, I've been to my family reunions, right? They know I can dance, but I don't do line dances. Do I know some? Yeah but I don't really do them. Right. Can I pick it up real quick? Yeah, but I go to a family reunion and all my family, uh, all my family on the father's side of the family doing line dances and I'm just like, mm, <laughs> well, that's not really my speed. Yeah. That's, that's not, but that's what it's like. It's like something that's supposed to be natural, something that is recognized by your entire village, your entire culture, your entire family can't be utilized to you. And that just has to be if they don't demonize you, you feel isolated and demonized by yourself just because you can't do it. Right. And I, I feel bad for her. And I, I love that they gave us this episode with that context yep. um, to see how amazing she actually is, regardless of that. Yeah. I, I'm, I must say that the analogy that came to my mind was imagine a town where everybody was, was deaf and spoken sign language, but you're the only one I can hear. That's exactly what this was. It was literally that. Like everybody speaking sign language, you don't know what the fuck sign language is because you can hear and you can speak. And that's, that's it, it is very, very, it has to be so lonely to just know that nobody's saying anything, but they're saying so much. It's fucking crazy. Fucking crazy. And it was even cool to know that uh, Rudius, that she, she got the information that Rudius and his group had been there. Yes, man. I was hoping that happened, man. <laughs> With that, that made the, that 
entire this entire episode even brighter for me. When she got that information, I'm like, yes, okay, at least she knows. And then when she decides to move on with her adventuring with her other party, she now knows that, okay, well, he's fine. So right. let me continue to work on this job with this elf lady, with this uh, elf lady that's just fucking everything. <laughs> Hell yeah, she's going hard, bro. Literally. <laughs> <clears throat> but one of the, the biggest things that kind of put their like age differences into context for me was she said, don't forget to come visit at least every 20 years. Right. And to me, it's like, that's not like my mom, but don't forget to visit at least every once, every month, once a month or something like that. Yeah. 20 years, bro. You want me to come visit once every 20 years? And yeah. it's just going to be like, hey, how she's you like, been? And she's like, yeah, I'll come back every 50. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I don't know. That, that life is crazy to even think about. Like, her parents are literally hundreds and hundreds of years old. But they look 20. I don't want... And, and she looks like she's Rudy's age. Yep. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy this show a lot. The world is so interesting, so intriguing. Very, very big. Very, very big world. So... It, it gets bigger often. Yeah, exactly. And, like, understandably bigger because we don't, we don't know until the character knows, essentially. Right. So until Rudius knows, until Ares knows, we don't know how big or how far this goes. And when we figure it out, it's fucking it's a joy. Like the like the uh like the sword styles and all that other shit. So good. So good. All right. Let's move on. Blue period. First exam. Uh not necessarily my favorite episode. I loved I, it. I'm, oh, I'm not saying that at all. I loved his interpretation of his art in this episode. Mm. Easily one of the coolest things. And I was wondering what he was going to do when they said do a portrait because it was like, in my mind, when I thought of portrait, I thought of something completely different. I thought of like making this circle and then drawing a bunch of different angles of yourself around, around that circle showing you know, you are a multifaceted, different kind of picture, right? That mirror breaking for him was such a dope concept. Yes. And how, and how he did it with like the layered ribbons. I was like, that was beautiful. I do have some gripes with the artwork, but it's professional artwork. I, I can't be a judge, but it was beautiful. It was really, it was really cool. The, the most important thing about this show is the internal conflict within himself and his monologues, bro, his so fucking good self-realization the uh it's wonderful it's wonderful it's so well thought out when it comes to these conversations he has within himself because it's literally for majority of the show it was him talking to himself mm-hmm. and that and that the fact that this anime could do that and not be boring at least to me especially somebody who's not in that quote-unquote artsy world like just terribly intriguing so fucking good and it goes to show like there's no fucking excuse for poor writing man like i can't right i can't i still can't think about shows like uh what's the like like platinum in where the writing just suffers so fucking much man because they're just it's disappointing this episode with like his internal monologue because i also agree with what you said it was so good I'm waiting for the moment where he kind of goes into the, like the artistic zone mm. and he doesn't talk. Like, and he, I want to like see how, how they the first episode, I wanna, right? Yeah. I want to see how they do that. Once he develops his talents more and how they, how they illustrate that because as an artist, that's something that happens often when you're like, you're doing your best work is when you just you don't even think about what's happening internally you just just fucking do it <laughs> just you just put it on the page you just put it together you the composition it doesn't matter you're just doing it right and i want to see what what how that works out for him how he does it um and how they illustrate that because that's going to be that's going to make this anime too realistic for me when they get to that point i love it. i'm going to be like this is the fucking art anime this is what <laughs> the world needed i love it <clears throat> I absolutely love it because it's it's necessary. I, um, I I just find it so it it's so unique. 
I'm sure there's other anime like this where it, where it touches on art. But for me, for what I've seen in my catalog, it's definitely a unique anime. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, I would also like to say we found out the three who at least made it past the first exam. Which was a dope way of doing it too, by the way. Teachers in the room. She's like, oh, here goes the first, the second, the second one. And it was, what's her name? And obviously. They- so what's her name? Kuana. Uh, the dude with the long black hair. He was already in another school, except that he was just coming to cram school. Yeah, so and he didn't count. Our our guy Yatora. Um, now what what bothered me is that we knew uh, Ryuji wasn't gonna make it. Oh yeah, Ryuji, he okay. gave up. Yeah, he just put an X. <laughs> yeah. She put an X on hers. Yeah, and just kind of like went on and just left. Now. <clears throat> I do know that there have been art competitions where artists have gone and done things like that and won because of like how straight they li- their lines were, that kind of thing. But she, yeah, she, they, they <laughs> is, I don't know how they identify, but yeah. they just put down X's and just left. Um, mm-hmm. It made me feel bad to know that they just gave up like that. They haven't Same. told anybody that they gave up, but I do understand the pressure um and the the not wanting to do art for someone like that you want to do it as your own expression right and how they and even like the art exhibit uh the art exhibit like thing they did when they went to the art exhibit looked at everything and then they had to go back a second time and draw something it shows that she has a unique perspective and she just didn't know how to utilize it there right so I, w- I would like more information on that personally, just because I want to know what was that, what was that tipping point that made her give up there? Was it too much pressure? Did she decide that this, this isn't for me? What was it? Um, is it because your Torah is becoming so good that you feel like overshadowed? I just want to know. Are you confusing the <laughs> girl in his cram school class with Ryuji? Uh, that wasn't that wasn't Ryuji and the uh, Ryuji's, Ryuji is the one who did the X. Yeah, they did the, the X. The trans. Yeah, yeah, they did the X. But the girl that was in the museum with him was a d- completely different girl. Ryuji had the rock and roll stuff on. Nope, that wasn't Ryuji. Really? Yeah, that was, that was a whole another girl. <laughs> That's why I was like, oh, wait, the museum. Yeah, Ryuji, he, they definitely did the X, but that girl was the quiet girl in his class. I was in his class for a long time. I forget her name, though. Okay, okay. But Because I, I thought there was two students who did something different. It was the one quiet girl, and then there was Ryuji, but I, I'm, I'm probably wrong. Yeah. No, I, I know exactly what you were talking about. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think Ryuji... I think the first reason you said that Ryuji gave up was that reason. I think they, they just wanted to express art as, like use art as a sense of expression and I think what they did with that is like say fuck this <laughs> I'm gonna do it when I want to do it and I'll just go where I where I want to take my art which is the way right. what is what I believe to be the right answer um, trying to get into art school just it still seems so off to me <laughs> I know we talked about that a lot last episode but very well done though very 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 well done well done show well done show in general yeah. beautiful show beautiful show for their writing and how they how they display the art what's, what's so what was the gripe you had with the art piece itself with his piece um so was it because it really, wasn't an anime it was a, no no oh, okay because it, how it was drawn was beautiful i don't care about it being anime <clears throat> what my actual gripe with it was that the way that he was drawing it, there was so much contrast between what was supposed to be sitting in the front and what was supposed to be sitting in the back. Um, as he f- they showed the finished product, it was so grayscale all the way through. Ah, I see. And there was no real depth to the art piece itself. I think- now, there was some dark parts, but they, they were, there were far few dark parts, and they made it feel like it wasn't as separated as he was talking about, like how separated he wanted it to be. Yeah, but do you think it was an angle thing? Because we were looking like, at it head on at that point. Head on, of course, it wouldn't look that different. But the yeah, way he was that, drawing it, he was drawing it at it, like uh, so it could be when it's viewed at that angle, you can see the different layers between the the, 
the scales. Right. Yeah, but he didn't he didn't actually like rip it apart, right? There's no actual deviations no, in the I know, paper. I know. So you're not gonna be able to view it different. Like a piece of paper is not gonna do that for you from a different angle but unless it, he actually it can, bro. It can. <laughs> it definitely I'm, can. I'm saying what he did isn't doing that. That's what I'm saying. Mm. I'm not saying I'm not saying unless they just they dis, dis, display it different and like in like the next episode. This isn't an MC Escher style drawing. MC Escher was the artist who would give you a drawing and it was 4D, right? So you would have this specific look, but then you would go from a different angle and it would look different. But he didn't do that just on simple paper with simple drawings. He would have to rip that paper up and then it would look flat this angle and then you go to a different angle and it would look like something completely different. So so the way the way he was describing it in the episode, he was he was using the method that his teacher was telling him about the lighter the, the more shaded lines can give a different viewing aspect ratio mm-hmm. or whatever. When he <clears> taped <throat> it off, he did darkers on one side and kept the one side lighter. So when you take take the tape off, you still have the lighter pieces with the darker the darker situation. So if you yeah. do if you look at that at a different angle, that will give the effect if it's obviously shaded in rightly, you know, whatever, done yeah. right, done correctly, it still give it that effect to where it was the different where you if, if you look at it here you will see the, the darker sides come together more than you would see the, the lighter sides. And if you look at yeah. it here, you will see the lighter sides come together more than you would see the darker sides. But when they showed it, they showed it straight on. When you look at it straight on, it just just looks like straight lines. So yeah. that's that's what I mean by that. It's definitely possible to do, though. Yeah, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying that that's not what he did. Because totally he went is. way... He went way too grayscale with it. If he if he would need more contrast to make that happen, on okay. on, the, on the level of, like everything was too monotone. I want to did there was there was probably like the episode now. <laughs> three slips that had enough darkness to make that work, mm. but everything else was entirely too monotone. So you only got three po- points of focus that would make something like that stand out, and it wasn't enough to do that for the entirety of the drawing. Um, I want to rewatch that episode now. I'm not I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying from my experience and seeing stuff similar to that, drawing stuff similar to that, that's not what he did. Mm. And if they show that is what he did, then I'll eat my words, whatever. But I do I'm think up. that what he did, I, I think his, his initial thought, like where they were taking it, was way better than the actual execution. And that happens a lot as an artist. Sometimes your thought is too good for what your actual talents are. And sometimes you over process a drawing or a painting and don't get the same result as what you had in the beginning. I totally forgot we weren't supposed to even talk about Blue Period. <laughs> we told Crystal that we was going to wait until it caught up. But we had to. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, My Crystal. bad, Crystal. <laughs> but I am going to rewatch that episode. And, I, and if, it's, if it's what I think it is, I'm going to send you the clip. Because I do think he did do that. And this, when we looked at it straight on, it didn't look like it. But hopefully, maybe next episode they'll show us. Because that... Uh, I think that piece was his best piece yet throughout the entire show. Period. And he draws some dope shit. Drew. Draw it. <laughs> Drew some dope shit. Yeah, so, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know. Because I, 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 I need to know. I need to know. We are doing this live. So I'm going to go ahead and vamp while Tell watches it. Uh, no, I'm just looking at the picture itself. Oh, just a picture. Oh, yeah. It, they showed yeah. it head on, so... It okay. looks like, hold on, it looks really good. Um, oh, I can't go live. I was going to show you. <laughs> uh, hey, look, it look, it looks really good. I don't know if you can see it or if you got to change my camera around or anything like that. Yeah. It oh, stuff up. see, no, nah, I mean, yeah, but it's fine. Oh, uh, like, yeah, that does look real. <laughs> hold on. It, look, it looks like, I love how it looks, but like, if you look at the shade and I don't know if you can see my mouse. Yeah, yeah. Like right here on this piece right here, the shading is immaculate. Like I love that difference there. Same here, difference here. Same here, really good difference. But it's not enough to where if you go, if you're from a different angle, you actually see like a different like layout. Of but it. but why wouldn't you though? Look at his eyes. His eyes are even set to where if you look at it at a different angle, it'll make one eye. You know what I'm saying? Like it's even doing that. It's trying to do that effect. I, I obviously it's coming it, through an anime so it's hard to tell but I think if you remove all the super dark parts except for the very like middle where the nose is it comes together as a regular face like a full face but I think that if you remove everything else these dark parts don't have enough substance for them to do something separate y'all can barely see it the way the camera's set up now on the stream but if y'all, watching the, if y'all watching the video version <laughs> you would know what we're talking about but 
I will still disagree with you. I will still think hopefully they do this next episode. It'll be a missed opportunity if they don't. They do a next episode where people can look at it at a different angle and then they yeah. prove that that was a point because I, when I saw the, the quote unquote because if you look there's double eyes on each side yeah. there's two different I eyes I think they should cut this up and then like put it together because I think if I don't you think cut you need it up to. and put it together it'll look it'll give the look that you're talking about I don't think you need to I think if you look at if you use peripheral vision yeah, I think oops, sorry mama I, <laughs> I think it'll still give you that, that, that vision that look I just I can't you can't really tell looking dead on at it through an anime but what's cool about this is that this is an, an actual portrait of a person and not an anime. Isn't that f- so fucking cool? Like an anime yeah. character. That's so fucking cool. And that's exactly why I was talking about when we first started watching the show that I think that they decided to go with the 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 less gaudy anime art style, right? Like the less detailed art anime art style to something yeah. like this so they can do shit like this because that shit looks incredible popping incredible off, bro <laughs> popping off that screen like that this shit looks good as fuck bro and they did that with every statue that they drew too I love this show so much man Blue Period is so good I do think this is very specifically for uh, slice of life people though don't you think I mean yeah, yeah. it's gotta be yeah, you gotta you gotta like slice of life to enjoy the show because otherwise you're gonna be bored. Yeah, this this ain't for you if you a uh, meathead or I don't mean to say that if you if you only watch like your typical shonen and stuff. Yeah, because it's man, I, I just wish I can recommend it for everybody, but I just know I can't. I absolutely know I can't. All right, that a wrap. We just finished talking about the awesomeness, the masterpiece that is known as Blue Period. Uh, let us know what you think about that artwork if you watch this episode. Crystal, we're talking to you mainly. Uh, <laughs> we're talking to everybody, but Crystal, we know you're you watching it. Jobless Reincarnation. Um, what do you think about this latest episode? Uh, was it amazing? Did it blow your mind? It certainly blew ours. We also had a break with a great song chosen by our curator and DJ Polo, Born Fly himself. And our question to get to know my check wife who was the last movie you watched. Um, we also talked about Polo's new top five uh, seeing yesterday for me. Um, <laughs> Not solidified. That's a sacred list, man. It made it into the top five, possibly. We'll see. Possibly. We also gave a little bit of talk on Platinum and a little bit of spoilers, but you know, uh, hate to say it, we might still be a little disappointed on that. Let's see how it goes in the future. We also talked about Arcane and a little bit of how it gave me the Uncanny Valley feel Dude. and just overall how it is probably the best game uh, to TV show series that we've watched so Ever. far, and we can only hope they, they keep it up with being that good. Uh, we also talked about uh, worlds and harem. I need I say more. Um, <laughs> and then we have a future guest coming from Cleveland himself. Uh, in the future, we'll see how that goes. Uh, let us know if you can figure out who it is. Some of y'all follow him, so you know. And then we also talked about Polo's current time in Cleveland, Ohio. How he's loving it. It's snowing. He ain't liking that, but he'll be back in H Town soon enough. And um, our episode of the week was both of us, Jobless Reincarnation. That's been episode 126 of My Check Waifu Waifu. I'm at Polo Born Fly on all social media. I'm at King Taliano on all social media. You can follow our social medias at My Check Waifu on Twitter and at My Check Waifu Waifu on Instagram. And as always, My My Check. You're now tuned into Mike Check Waifu Waifu.